Hello and welcome back to the channel. It's Mark from PowerSonic and Apprentice One to One. You will see behind me we have another Sage Energy. I always pronounced that wrong. Going in on a customer install here. We're working with Michael Stott and James Watkins on this one. And the install is now over, so I can give a massive thank you to those two guys for helping out on this one. They've done some incredible work up on the roof, as you're going to see through the course of this video. Also, thanks to Ben from Rexel at Ilkston, who's done a sterling job in supplying us both while we've been on site on this project. We are well out of territory in South Wales. And yeah, massive shout out to him. If you're looking for a supplier around any electrical system, but especially renewables, Ben is the man to speak to. That's Ben Griffin. Uh, this is the side energy, though. We've got a whole, whole whole home backup system on the wall behind me there that you can see we've also got a 10 kilowatt single phase inverter and i'm going to show you how all of this came to be through the course of this video we're going to focus in on the roof work more than the inverters we've shown this lots on the channel before but i will take you in close and show you how all of this works just to say right at the start if you are a consumer and you're looking for solar pv and battery storage in your home please do get in touch with us on the links in the description we're always looking for interesting and exciting projects around the UK and this has been a great one of those and it's customers who's found us through the means of the internet. So please do reach out, it would be an absolute pleasure to look at your system and propose something for your home or business. Otherwise, without further ado, let's cut straight to the video and dig into how all of this came into being. So just dropping down a bit lower, you can see here we've got all of the inverter neatly tidy away. We're just clearing up the garage area behind us and um yeah it's come up nice the existing wiring in this garage certainly does need a bit of attention and it's going to be getting it but we've tried to keep our work as neat and tidy as possible and away and free from everything else i'm very happy with how that's come out this is now 16 kilowatt hours of storage with a 10 kilowatt inverter whole home backup full isolation these are the uh four pole so they'll do two strings in one inverter isolators from imo so they are absolutely brilliant in allowing for um, switching more than one string and we've kind of done it on roof aspect faces on this one it's just to limit the number of switch gear out on show with the four strings it felt like it was getting a bit much and it still leaves some redundancy in the system if there is a problem with an array that needs turning off while it's fixed and obviously combined with the tigo optimization you know we've got all of that protective measures in place and opportunity for lots of ongoing maintenance so with this one i'll try and find a picture because i closed it all up before um recording but we've actually got the Tiga in there, the CCA, if you can see it flashing away. So it's set back behind this plastic screen. It's mounted on a DIN rail. Picture should prop up to show you. Um, but that is now actively connected to the internet and working, and it's housed in an enclosure of the space floor, and it avoids more boxes on the wall. Um, but you can see we've got our, this is our backup for the SIG Energy system. You get a nice schematic on there. And in essence, this allows you to power your home when you go off grid. Now, combined with the 10 kilowatt inverter on the top of the Sigan store, um, this gives some really useful prospect um, to power most of your home in an off grid scenario. Now, obviously, you're limited by the battery capacity, and in this case, it's 16 kilowatt hours. Um, but, you know, that's still a reasonable amount. You're not going to want to run it at the full 10, 10 kilowatt rating, most likely. But if you wanted to, when you're off grid, the option is there. This swings over almost instantly. It's one of the fastest on the market. And um, we're very happy with how that's come out. There's some existing problems with the wiring that the customer's going to be getting sorted out with Jimbo, who's been working as, with us this week. You can see we've got everything all labelled up, uh, branded up. Nice, neat cable routes with the PV Ultra up onto the roofs. And Mike and Matty and Nathan have done a cracking job up there. This should have lots of cool content for us that will be included with this video so you'll see one of the problems we have with the meter cabinets and i've covered this before on the channel in new build and also when we're doing things like this adding a gateway remote to the main supply it's fitting everything in unfortunately this backboard from the dno was fully labeled up so this side um, included space for a switch fuse and even a, a cons customer's consumer unit and they marked out space for their metering which you can see has been left free there is plenty of room to work in and around the head there and you know that's just one of the things we've got to do is share this space as best we can i'll show you in here it's just the switch fuse it's secured back nice and solid and then we've dropped into the henleys at the bottom so basically you've got your grid power coming in off the meter which runs into this switch fuse that then goes off through our steel wire armor sub main over to the garage area and powers the gateway it's then returned back through the steel wire armor 
and drops out into these Henleys um, to run off to the house consumer unit. Inside's fully decorated. There's no way we're cutting in another media cabinet here. There's there's gas and water and all sorts going on in this wall. And um, yeah, it's just the best, easiest, simplest solution is to share this space as best we can. If ever it's a problem in the future, you know, this can all be reworked and maybe put a double cabin or something, for example. But that's the solution we've got on this one. Let me know in the comments what you think. Um, we did one rework in a new build that was really hard because the steel wire armor was existing in the cabinet with no play in it. Fortunately, this one, because it's one we've dropped in, we've had that room, managed to get it flush onto the backboard, and it's nicely tucked in that top corner, taking up as little space as we could humanly possibly manage to take. Um, it's not ideal. I'm not going to pretend it is, but we are where we are. We're just waiting on the metering company to come back and seal all this up and check that they're happy. Um, but otherwise, that's the, that bit buttoned up. So if we jump up onto the roof, we can see we've got James Watkins up there with Nathan. And in this little short clip at the start, they're just demonstrating how we move the rail and some of the tiles around up there. So you can see James is recording some of what he's doing for his future reference. This is his first time working on a roof doing solar PV. And as we were pretty local to him down in South Wales, it was a great opportunity to introduce him to some of the processes involved and put him alongside Michael Stott, who is an absolute sensation. So you can see there, we've just demonstrating the grinding out of some of the back of these tiles. And that is the dirty, mucky part of the job. And also a lot of the moss and things you will see. This roof was absolutely caked in it. We did give it a blow and brush off pre-starting, but still there was a lot of it ingrained and we've just rubbed it off as we've worked around doing the hooks and rails and cleaned it up for the customer out of the gutters, leaving a nice, neat, tidy finish. So the process with roof work, we generally start with the hooks, which is a case of lifting the tiles up out of the way and then finding where the rafters are to screw those hooks down into the timbers. And we'll show you some examples of that in just a second. You see there we're mounting these rails, so they're going to be under the panels in a portrait horizontal fashion, but we have the panels laid in landscape, which I don't think we've shown on the channel before. Key consideration around that is your wind down and uplift forces are slightly less in that configuration than they would be with the rails in um, a vertical pane under landscape panels. However, we're still well within the limits on this particular aspect. So it was more than adequate to carry out the installation in this way. And it's just easier to work with horizontal rails rather than ones up the roofs as we've shown before, when you're then left struggling for purchase to position yourself carrying out these works. And you can see James and Nathan there are busy lifting tiles out and attaching hooks into the third rail up on this one. And this is Van der Volk rail and hooks as normal. We've got an approximate distance of around a meter between each hook, and we're basically working along on this elevation here. There is 31 panels going down on this particular roof, I believe. Not this individual roof aspect, but the, the property as a whole. We've got three roofs on this side and another roof on top of the garage around the other side. And I'll show you them when they're finished for the number of panels and in which location. You see here, Nathan, I think he's about to take his tile away, having marked it and go and grind it out. And James is just carefully making his way off the scaffold there to come and grab um, a little hook and ready in to insert that into the space he's made up there as well. Mike's on camera duty, but you'll see shortly he is going to jump in there and, and help the guys out. He's been an absolute powerhouse bringing into our roof work to help pass his skills on into Matthew and Nathan. Um, we've been doing the, the roof work now for a couple of years and still some of the nuances are built in experience. So I think it was a really important move for us to bring that into our team and utilising Mike's skills and he's absolutely brilliant at passing that on to others, as he's done on this job uh, with James. And again, now working in and among Matty and Nathan. I think they're accomplished now. They've passed out of Mike's school, and um, this was just a big job, so it needed more hands on, on, on the pumps, so to speak. So you can see Nathan's got his tile there. He's bringing it down, making sure he gets his PPE in place. So his gloves, glasses, ear defenders, and masks. And we usually pop these in a bucket, and grind out into the bucket. The dust is one of the hard things to control. 
Um, you know, there's the, the wetting down that we can do. These tiles were already wet to try and control that dust as far as possible. But it's one of those, unfortunately, where, you know, in the world of construction, we can try and limit that as best we can. But there is still elements of that that um, are a byproduct of the work at hand. And you can see there, Nathan is just busy finishing off grinding that particular tile out, and then he'll jump back up onto the roof. The usual process of this would be a couple of people up on the roof fitting the hooks and passing the tiles down to another person who does the grinding out and passes them back up, basically. So there's no coming up and down off the roof space. But in this case, uh, Mike's running through a bit of training with the guys. So they're um, taking all of the information and skills in for themselves through the course of doing this particular little activity here. Um, and yeah, that's just, just how it goes. I mean, the reason for, for doing it that way is twofold. One, we're trying to reduce the amount of times that we're actually walking up and down the roof face. These tiles are often brittle and may have been up there for um, several decades and just your movement across them can lead to breakages. So we're trying to limit that as much as possible. And in this particular job, we did end up breaking a fair few tiles. I think around 15 is a fair estimate across those four roofs that we'd broke. And I think we found a further 15 that were already broke and cracked before we started. Um, so the roof was needing a little bit of TLC and we've given it on that side. You can see here, uh, Mike's gonna demonstrate grinding out the back of one of these tiles. And he is Team Makita with his power tools. And it just goes to show really that we all get a bit wrapped up in what power tools we're using, but ultimately, you know, they all serve the same purpose. And you can see the purpose of the gorilla bucket there to try and catch the bulk of the dust that's kicked out through the pair through the process of grinding out the back of these tiles. So we're grinding little notches, and then you basically just run along and cut those out to try and leave yourself a flat space. And that then sits over the hook that you're putting into the roof structure. And it's what you want with your hook is for it to be sat above the tile underneath. So you've got a gap. Basically, when the wind pushes down on your array, you don't want the hook that's fitted to then compress onto the tile underneath it because it can crack it. So, you know, you can make every best effort to install your system and have a good sound roof underneath it. But when some of the wind starts to impact onto your array in the coming weeks and months if those brackets are sat flush on the, to those tiles they can cause cracks and then you can form leaks so it's really important when your contractors are working up on your roof that you know you've got that assurance that it may, everything may be all right the day the system's handed over and it may well be for a few weeks months maybe even years afterwards but eventually if that process hasn't been done as carefully as it should be you will start to see that water ingress and then that becomes a big headache because there's the scaffold costs and all of the things around that. And unfortunately in the solar sector, it seems lots of these companies who were maybe rushing their installation practices, shall we say, are long since gone by the time these faults are, are, are noticeable. And then the consumers are left picking up the bill, trying to get that rectified. We've helped two or three already in our short time of doing solar pv systems with those roof repairs so i know for, for a fact it does happen and from chatting from other guys who've been at this longer than we have it's a fairly common occurrence so you can see mike there he's scoping out the edge of the final array and popping some tiles back over at the other side in the valley there um james and nathan are just making sure they're happy with all of the tiles going back on this top fourth rail and this was one of the roofs i think we popped nine panels down on so we've got um on this particular aspect, shall we say, where we've got three of the roofs all together, this one has nine. I think the one adjacent to that, so just off to the left in shot behind Mike, has eight panels. And then there is another smaller little roof that I think we put four panels on. So I'm voicing this over two or three weeks after we've actually done it, and we've subsequently been to other places. So I may have got that wrong. We'll see in a minute as we have a look through the arrays when they're finished. So you see Mike's just giving the guys a few last pointers there on, on what we're going to do to finish these off and um, helping Nathan out and James out in finishing up this top rail on this side. And that's the bulk of the work with the roof work. It is all the, the work around the hooks and the rails. The actual process of laying the panels down is the fastest part of the job. And we've seen that on some of the installs we've had where we might be, I think we were a couple of days on these roofs getting all the hooks and rails in place. And you can see the doubt in the customer's mind that you're actually going to get all your panels down in the, the time window that you've given them. 
And then the day comes to drop the panels on, and by lunchtime, they're all on the roof, all square, all fixed down, and you're just left with the tidying up of bird guard and trimming rails. And we get those questions too, when the rails are left poking out the edge of the panels and the customer asks us if we're going to cut those off or if they're going to be left sitting there. So, you know, that's one of the things when you're having a system installed, it's letting that process take place. And a good installer will leave you with a very tidy result. All the rails trimmed, all the bird guard on. And as we do with our systems, optimised as well. So this uh, whole job is going to be optimised by the Tigo system. And you can see James there firing the screws into the rafters that we spoke about earlier. So you can see at the top of that picture you have your batten, which is what secures the tiles into position. And then you have your felt underneath that, which is kind of a, a weather seal while the roof's constructed, but also forms kind of a final layer of protection when the roof is in place. In a well-installed roof, that felt should not be seeing moisture, but it is there in the worst times that it could happen. And James is just nipping up that bracket to get it nice and square. We go over these with a torque wrench to the Van der Volk spec before the tiles are put back over but it's um, just a way of ensuring we've got them roughly straight and a couple of dugger duggers on there so we know it's not moving. And then we're ready to just grind the back of that tile out and stick it over on top of the hook. And you can see Nathan here is going to do that. So he's just finished grinding off this tile and we've got the roof aspect open there. So he's a, he's a big proponent of protecting his knees. So he's actually got knee pads in his trousers and then a kneeling mat. Two purposes of that. One is to protect the roof from cracking and the other to protect his actual knees and yeah you can see it's a simple case of just slotting that tile back in and over the batten so they are, these tiles have little nibs on the underside of them and they sit onto the batten there underneath some tiles will require nailing back in other roofing systems are laid with hardly any tiles nailed whatsoever maybe every other row so it depends on what you're working with and the original roofing construction and you can see here with the panels laid down, it looks the absolute business. So this is the roof you would have seen James and Nathan kneeled on with Mike supervising. And we've lost a little panel there in that bottom corner due to the valley. And actually this other array here next to it is nine panels as well. And these are Trina 450 watts, I believe, bifacial panels. And the bifacial aspect's really not going to do a great deal when it is on a dark roof surface. But the cost is exactly the same as going for a traditional panel and it makes sense, I guess, to install these because you will get a slight benefit. Making sure we get our uh, clamps in the right place on the rails, that's the other important aspect. There are zones that change from panel to panel of where you can mount those to secure them down onto those rails. So the process is the hooks secure to the roof, the panels sit on the rails and then are clamped down onto that. And then finally, the bird guard, as you can see there from Pestfix, is wrapped around and secured using the clamps so no birds can get in. Mike kindly recorded a lot of this footage up on the roof with his new camera, and I think he has done a sterling job there. I'll drop a link to his YouTube channel in the description of this video, and please do go off and subscribe. Mike is an absolutely awesome guy, and trying to build his own YouTube up in a separate place, so there will be a link to go off and do that. And these panels look absolutely brilliant. It was great to work with James through the course of this week. He was an absolute powerhouse and his first go at working on a roof, he took to it like a duck to water and hopefully in the months and years ahead, he may well help start serving the South Wales area doing solar PV as his own. Hopefully he has got the bug for it and um, can get the benefits that we've seen in our business. You see there, this is the other, no, this is the roof again that the guys were working on laying the rail earlier on. And this is the other two roofs to the side of that with nine and four panels, all bird guarded up, all clamped down, nicely cut rails clamped. And these all have Tiger Tigo optimizers underneath as well for the rapid shutdown function and also the monitoring so you can see exactly what is going on. There is another roof around the corner and that is this one. We didn't get a lot of content up there because it was on a separate scaffold deck. So thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you've got any questions around the install, please do drop them in below as always. And again, just a huge thanks to Magic Mike, to James and Matty and Nathan, who have delivered another exceptional system for a customer to enjoy for many, many years to come. Packed with functions in using this day to day, but also heavily focused on the safety side. We're always looking at that safety, quality and value principles we stand upon. And I think they've come out trumps here once again. If you haven't already, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Drop any questions into the comments below. And otherwise, we will see you on the next one.